Okay, not as controversial as the title suggests. Baby eating. Ooh, that sounds taboo, huh? Well, let's talk about what your baby and you should eat on a daily basis for a lifetime. So the title, Baby Eating Because You Love Your Kids. Think about it. As if you're an adult and you're listening to this, you are larger than a baby. Yep, went to medical school, didn't I? Well, the fact is that babies eat food. We do too. And you're replacing your cells every day of your life. And if you're a baby, you're growing cells, brand new cells, new nervous system, new heart cells, everything until eventually you're an adult sized person from babyhood. So baby eating because you love your kids. The reality is we all start as microscopic cells. We'll talk about that today. And now we're larger than microscopic cells. And some of us a lot larger than microscopic cells. So my name is Dr. Chris Melitis, naturopathic physician here in Oregon. Serve as a primary care doctor. I have a free newsletter articles available and just visit my website. And we're going to empower you with information you need to know more than ever living today and wanting to thrive and not just survive is an active process that you must take seriously because if you don't take care of yourself nobody else can or will so once upon a time we were babies and we were 100 percent dependent upon whatever mom dad aunts, aunts uncles whomever fed us and the question is what do we do from the fact that not all of us had control over that environment. We hopefully had a tender, caring, loving environment as we were 100% dependent about that environment around us. Hopefully our moms took a good prenatal, not only during pregnancy, but also after pregnancy. Hopefully she consumed things like a good quality iodine, vitamin D. She did not take toxic things into her bodies or use things like parabens on like in shampoos and makeups but once again we did not have control over at that point in time and hopefully we had an emotional silver spoon in our mouth if you grew up in a more stressful less nurturing environment in terms of love and care and hugs research have shown in animal models rodent models that you're more likely to be stressed for the rest of your life if you don't do something about it it's called epigenetics Genetics predisposes us, but at the same time, the thing of eating, diet, and lifestyle will help modulate your body and the expression and manifestation of most of the genes within your body. So we want to look at the fact, looking forward, okay, well, I could only do so much, but now I'm conscious, I'm aware, I have two hands, I'm able-bodied, and I can now more than ever say the word no, I don't want to eat that food, or no, I want to eat that food, but I'm not going to. And so once again, nourishing your body, remembering you're replacing cells, building cells every day. What are they made of? Hamburgers, french fries, maybe some sweets. Once again, not saying all those things are bad inherently, but moderation is the key. So we want to look forward to all those things and see how we can take care of ourselves. So at some point in time, our moms got pregnant and voila, here we are. A bumpy road, so to speak, as we were in utero. So every step that mom took, we took with her. Everything that she heard and felt, we experienced the hormones that she experienced, the highs and lows, and we were exposed to lots of things. If we were breastfed, not only did we have immunological support, we also had things like PQQ, which actually is readily available now as a supplement. It's pyroquinoline quinone and also things like endocannabinoids. Once again, yes, through breast milk, we actually get endocannabinoids like anatomide that pass through that help with neurological development. Hopefully mom liked fish or took a fish supplement which had DHA in it. Or if she did not breastfeed you, hopefully she had a DHA friendly and rich supplement. So the question is, we were born, we arrived, there's grand anticipation and we're here. But how often do we get exposed to things that we had no control over? But now you have control. 
And let's also, if you're a parent or soon to be parent, realize that we can nurture our kids for a lifetime from the moment of conception all the way through. They are what we eat. We are what we eat from our head to our feet. Kind of sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon from the 1970s. Actually, it is. And so the question is also, as we eat, so do our kids as they model our behavior. And so do our loved ones, our significant others. And once again, nurturing the body is foundational for this generation and the next. And let's break free. Let's claim victory. And the moment we can walk, talk, and either purse our lips and go, mm -mm, no lima beans for me, mm -mm, no cream peas for me. Well, mom was right that actually vegetables are good for us. But sometimes we're kind of stuck with not liking vegetables. We need to find vegetables that we do like. And by the way, corn is a grain, not a vegetable. And we want to nurture our bodies. So all of our journeys start the same way. Fertilized egg, 23 chromosomes for mom, 23 chromosomes for dad. And voila, they came together. Shortly thereafter, the egg and the sperm are combined. There's a spark of life that the researchers now call it. It's a zinc spark. It's actually believed to be generated by zinc. And that spark is how you start dividing from one fertilized egg to two, to four, to eight, to 16, to 32, to 64, to 128, to 256, onwards and onwards to the trillions of cells that make up your body. You're believed as an adult to be made of some 30 to 40 trillion cells. Some researchers argue 50 to 100 trillion cells, but Trillion's a big number, so we'll stick with that. Each one of your cells has six feet of DNA in it. And they say if you connect all the DNA of each of your cells end to end to end, it reached to and fro the sun about 300 times. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. And to think that picture here of a mom holding a picture of maybe you, if you want to imagine that. And how was your journey? And how was it fed? And how were you nourished? And have you ate the right foods? or up to this point, but remembering our cells are always replacing themselves. And today is a great day to start nourishing yourself with better intention and to fuel our children and our next generation because we have challenges and burdens our predecessors did not. Great grandma, guaranteed she ate more organic than you did because virtually everything was organic. So it was like, okay, it wasn't even intention. I have a garden, I sit in my backyard, I put a little fertilizer on it and I ate it. That was organic. And so it's like, hmm, what is happening to our world? We're being more challenged. So we have to eat with more intention. And what's interesting, of the trillions of cells in your body, a lot of them are red blood cells. And the red blood cells deliver oxygen, nutrients. They irrigate the garden of the trillions of cells. And every garden needs a good irrigation system. But a red blood cell only lives between 90 and 120 days. And you can tell from a simple CBC, complete blood count with differential, the size of red blood cells, the number of red blood cells, how much hemoglobin you have. Hemoglobin is an iron containing molecule. The MCV, mean corpuscle volume, that means mean red blood cell volume, will determine if you're leaning towards a B12 or folate deficiency. If you have larger red blood cells, greater than 90, moving towards 100, it's B12 or folate that's possibly you're underfueled. If it remembers, only 90 to 120 days that your red blood cells live. And that's important because if you are low in one or more nutrients during those 90 to 120 days, it shows up in your blood, simple blood tests. Likewise, if you're deficient, maybe you're a mom and you're pregnant, you didn't absorb your iron, you had morning sickness, your red blood cells might be smaller. It's called microcytic anemia. And as a result, you might be pointing towards iron deficiency. There's clues in our blood. I tell everybody, get your blood work done. And if you don't have health care insurance, you can actually get the tests done by yourself in most states through a laboratory link I have on my website. So it's like, once again, not a substitution for going to your doctor, but if you're not able to access the health care you want to know your vitamin D levels or your B12 levels, your CBC, or you're tracking something, well, that's a way to do it. So once again, lots of research out there and a lot of empowerment thanks to technology or we have access. So we're removing the excuses and we're eating more healthy and we're monitoring our health proactively opposed to reactively. So life's full of choices. 
I will tell you, I enjoy everything I see on this slide, except for maybe the eggplant. Eh, eggplant's a push for me. So I like to eat organic whenever I can afford to, and I have a choice and I'm not traveling, lecturing. And once again, do we, are we made of fresh fruits and vegetables? Or are we made merely of hamburgers and french fries? But do we have our fair share of salads? Mom was right, vegetables are good for us. They're full of phytonutrients, things that we cannot get elsewhere. And once again, a little sugar goes a long way. So we want to find moderation. That's not to say you have to be an exclusive no sugar person, unless you're way out of control diabetic or your doctor said no sugar ever in your whole life. And we are what we're eating. As you can see the tape measure, not so much about size, but imagine him being one large hamburger. If you eat hamburgers every day, you become a hamburger. After all, every cell in your body is made from what you just ate. If you only eat hamburgers, guess what? You're made of hamburgers. So it's kind of simple. Once again, I offer a free monthly newsletter. I have a lot of articles on my website. I have a free oxygen book available as well that I wrote, also downloadable. And it's all about empowerment. I want the very best for you, your little ones. I work with a company called Fairhaven Health. So once again, I also like to work on fertility because fertility is not just becoming pregnant, it's staying pregnant and having a better than optimal outcome. It's all about surviving beyond that we want to thrive. So we got to survive, got to continue to clock and end the years, but we also want to thrive. Most of us barely survive and our cells are struggling and they're doing well and our genes are working for us, but we don't properly feed our genes. We're not going to survive and definitely we're not going to thrive. So what I encourage people to do is look at my basic list. My basic list is simple. A multivitamin, high quality, not junk, not synthetic, or a good prenatal if you're pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or are nursing, because once again, you're delivering nourishment. And once again, I like to do it with iodine, unless your doctor says no iodine. Iodine is critical for brain development, helps push fluoride out of the body, iodine and fluoride compete in your body. You want to make sure you're getting a good quality omega-3. And if you don't have pristine fish, wild caught, deep cold water fish, then you want to supplement with an omega-3 EPA DHA. DHA is critical for adults, for calm brains and focus. Uh, the EPA is part of the essential fatty acid pathway to help with inflammation. And so once again, omega-3 is really good. It's part of our diets and most of our cultures had omega-3 either from animal products like fish or from things like flaxseed or chia seed or hemp oil. So once again, look at your cultures, look at your generations and say, how did they get their essential fatty acids? But when you're targeting DHA, I really do like, unless you're a vegan, I like fish products. The sunshine vitamin, most of us are low in vitamin D at some level, when I say low, I would encourage you, Google Linus Pauling Institute. Linus Pauling Institute. He was famous for vitamin C research. It's a state university, Oregon State University's Linus Pauling Institute. And you'll find out vitamin D has a lot of potential health benefits. Good quality non-fluoridated water. I do not like fluoride in my water. And it's kind of like makes me sound like this is Sam I am, no green eggs and ham. But the fact is I do not like fluoride in my water. Fluoride is something that needs a prescription. Even if you read the back of a toothpaste container, if you swallow more than a pea-sized amount, call poison control. And so once again, there's a balance between fluoride, how much is good for you, and how much can be detrimental. Avoid the dirty dozen foods. There is a list of dirty dozen foods created by the Environmental Working Group. But you Google dirty dozen foods, they'll pop up. These are the foods you do not want to eat when you're out and about, unless you get go ahead and buy them organically. So once again, Dirty Dozen Foods, you'll read about it, beautiful list. And there's also the 15, 16 clean foods, which will say, okay, if you're out and about, you don't have a choice, choose those. Avoid parabens, shampoos, hairsprays, makeups, and they're even in household scents. They're in fabric softeners sometimes. Also phthalates, don't freak out of plastic water bottles, people because once again, we're estrogenizing ourselves. Plastic is not good for us. And even if you are having babies and that's the stage of life you're in, phthalate-free teething rings, phthalate-free other things that go in their mouths, very, very important. Otherwise, you're estrogenizing your kids. Estrogen's fine, but too much estrogen for a male or a female, not a good thing. 
And once again, these are estrogen-like substances. Avoid synthetic smells. Synthetic smells are not, once again, part of nature. Same thing with chemical, household chemicals. Not good. You know, what they say, use in ventilated area. A lot of the things that are in our homes that they're synthetic or chemical should not even be breathed. They've never been breathed by our ancestors, and now we're breathing them, and we don't know what's going to happen. And lastly, stay away from monosodium glutamate, MSG. Avoid genetically modified foods, because we don't know all the research. If you want to be a guinea pig, eat an apple, but don't be, make sure it's not a genetically modified apple. Herbicides, pesticides, farmed fish, all things you want to avoid. And glyphosate, also known sometimes as Roundup, or Roundup-like. And so it's like, these are things that our ancestors never consumed. So why should we? This is just general health information. It's not intended as medical diagnosis or treatment. And my single primary goal is what? I want you well. Because if we're all healthier, we're all happier, we're going to thrive as a society. We're not going to struggle. And we're smarter, healthier. The next generation is going to do great. And if there's no better sign of patriotism, no matter which country you live in, no bigger sense of pride in yourself and self-love than eating well. So once again, take care of yourself, take care of your offspring, because after all, we are the future of the world.